Hello YouTube, uh, today I'm going to be doing a oil painting from a photograph that I printed out. Uh, it looks a little bit more orange than it did on the computer screen. And today uh, I'm going to be testing out over the next couple of videos these two mediums, Gablin's Solvent Free Medium and Liquin. Now for this first one, I'm going to use uh, the solvent-free version of medium for the sheer fact that I'm going to have a problem with ventilation in here. Uh, I do have two windows open. I will be using the liquid, but that will not be drying uh, in here as I, I live in here. So I'm thinking that I'm going to be trying the wipeout technique where... You uh, thin this down with solvent and then wipe it out. Uh, the colors that we should need today is burn umber. Uh, but if this wipeout technique doesn't work uh, and this gesso absorbs the burn umber, I'm already prepared. We'll be using today bl ivory black and titanium white. And that will be for my uh, shadows and highlights. Start out with like four layers of matte medium on its base on the raw wood. And then I did lengthways, crossways, counted that as one layer, sanded it, and then rinse and repeat like about four or five times. And then on the final layer, I put four layers of gesso, and I didn't sand until the very final layer. So I figured that this will not absorb nearly as much. So I figure the more ground I put on this, uh, the less likely the absorbency will happen. So the colors that you'll need today is burn umber. All right, today I'm starting out on a glass palette with burn umber. My fuck oil paint smells good. Oh, I think that smell good past me. Anyway, I'm going into my turpentine that I quickly decided was too dirty to work you know with. No, I start with clean. You want to start with clean mineral spirits and I said turpentine I'm sorry odorless mineral spirits anyway I'm thinning it down to a runny consistency this makes the uh, process of wiping it out a lot easier I was surprised that this panel did not absorb the paint as soon as I started and quickly you're gonna see I realize a small brush is just not gonna do the job Best. Big boy brush. Big boy brush indeed passed me. It's already almost gone. That paint's already almost gone. I did not put out enough paint. Anyway, you'll see oh, here. Wow. I'm already getting. <laughs> Pop you see that I'm already ah, splattering it's getting everywhere. the paint. Oh, it's like this brush is flinging it. It's like flinging. Yes. I do recommend okay. being gentle with this. That'll be a little bit gentler, folks. A little bit gentler. Let's get some more oil into this. I was running out of paint already. At any rate, if this does not work, at least I'll have something that's toned. Yes. But hey, it's kind of fun. Alright, well, it looks like it's moving around nice. I should have had that closed. Yes, always close your odorless mineral spirits when you're not using them. They do evaporate slowly, but you don't want to chance it. Close your jars in between brush dipping. Anyway, doing this allowed for the tone, so I'm not looking at harsh white. It also made it easier than just putting down and colored pencil, or not colored pencil, but just pencil, making the shapes. Instead, I'm making the shapes with a paper towel, just lifting the paint off, and just looking at the big picture. And this is a great exercise in working loose and seeing the big picture. Now as you see, that's working out just beautifully. I was surprised that this wouldn't work, or I was surprised because I thought this wouldn't work, but uh, to my delight, this worked out really well. Completely movable and 
did not absorb into the ground. So right now I'm just looking at basic shapes. The upper part of the brow ridge, underside of the brow ridge, and the shape of the eye, the plane of the eyelid underneath the eye. This is just a very excellent method to loosening up, not worrying too much about the detail. You don't even have to make it look like the photo, it doesn't matter. Just make it however you want it to look, as long as your values are correct. Not everybody's going to notice that it doesn't look exactly like a photo. When you look at a painting, you know, what am I looking at if it's a leaf? You know, it may not look like the leaf in the photo, but the audience is going to look at that and say, that looks like a leaf to me. And that's all you need to focus on to accomplish. And any detail work that will come later on. This whole purpose of this is to loosen you up. Just focus on the shapes. And most importantly, the value. Finding your darkest darks and lightest lights in the areas in between them. Now, as you can see, I've moved on to trying to add the pupil in. I changed this a little bit later on as I add the iris. And don't be afraid to add more paint in this. This is your thinnest layer. This is your your painting layer, which is the thinnest layer of your painting according to the fat over lean principle. But don't be afraid to add more oil. That solvent's still in there. It will still be a relatively thin paint. So don't be afraid to go back and put in darker darks. Now I'm trying to find the shadow under the eyelid and the crease uh, on the upper eyelid. Now I'm looking at the photo and I'm seeing the dark values around the brow ridge and the nose and this method lends well to sculpting out your final work all that you want to worry about is value and shape at this point and nothing else this will serve as your foundation for future layers to come and as you can see I'm coming in and I'm adding in some more of the dark val darker values I'm seeing I'm also going in and bringing in that eyebrow which the darkest parts of this that I can definitely see is under the top of the eyelid the nose and brow ridge and the eyebrow itself and the pupil itself and the crease on the upper lid so don't be afraid to go in there and put those darker darks in because even if it looks harsh you can always so with this method you can always soften uh the edges of your work and make a softer appearance Always remember, be looking at your photo as you're doing this. For me, this is several first. I'm, for one, trying to loosen up my painting and also working from a photo on a serious level. I've worked from photos before, but never in a serious manner as of this. For this painting, I will be using Gamblin Solvent Free Medium. I'll take this time to talk about mediums. Mediums, in general, help thin down the paint, increase the flow and transparency. 
and in the future I have never used Gamblin' Solvent Free Medium and from what I can tell from looking around the internet this is a fairly new product that hasn't been on the market very long which it boasts that it can do glazes and impostos which gives me an interesting idea not uh, for this I'm not going to be working with impostos but in the future I think maybe a few paintings down the line I could try doing impasto work with just a solvent free medium and straight up oil paint now here you can see I've taken out the pupil of the eye and blended it into the iris I go back in later on to add the darker part of the iris I'm also going back into the corner of the right corner of the eye and under the eyelid to add darker darks to it but yeah in the future I'm thinking that I could do an impasto painting just to try it I know it will go against all my instincts because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist that way like I'll look at an impasto painting and to me I'll think it's wrong but to some people uh, it gives a painter what's called a painterly quality that people like to see in art uh, but for the purposes of this painting I'm going to just be using uh, the solvent free medium to glaze this glaze this whole method is basically a subtractive method. I'm starting by just taking the paint out and then I'm gonna be going in later and grayscaling this image and adding more fine detail work. And after that I can go in and I can glaze colors without worrying about values because those values will be already established before you get to your color layers. So this is like getting like 85% of the work done, maybe even 95%. And here you can see my final painting as the camera cut out after five more, if it stayed for five more minutes, you would have saw the end. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.